Welcome back to Mayfair Club. We are here for the under-18 boys final in the national championships between Alexander Tabilo, who's looking to defend his title from last year, versus Daniel Wolfson. With a match preview, here are Michael Emmett and Bill Kanaitis. Gentlemen. Well, thank you very much, Abby. Well, Michael, this is an interesting matchup here. We're looking at for Daniel Wolfson, a guy who's won every title at every age, national title that is, except for this one, taking on last year's champion. So the storyline is there, but their head-to-head -head has been a little one-sided. It sure has. These guys have played all throughout juniors. But the interesting thing is they haven't played uh, since the 2011 Orange Bowl. So there's not a lot to go by in the fact that they've played a bunch of times, uh, according to both participants, they've played more than 20 times. And Wolfson has only won once. But that, that's a long time ago. And uh, today's, today could be a different story. Yeah, it's interesting. Their journey uh, this w to get to where they are right now. For Wolfson, he hasn't lost a set yet in this co in this competition. In their previous matches for Tabilo, really he has cruised. He's done a little bit of everything along the way. Shapovalov, Shapovalov, excuse me, really gave him a challenge though in the quarterfinals. And I hear from coaches around this building today that. That's the guy to look out for. He uh, he really gave Tabillo a run for his money. So um, I, a couple of coaches told me Tabillo is lucky to be here. But, you know, he is here and he's the defending champion and he's going for his 12th combined national championship today, which is absolutely scary. That's some and, outstanding numbers. And he could actually, when it's all said and done, have six under 18 national championships. He's got two now. He's going for three today. The outdoors makes four, then he's going to play next year. So, potential for six national championships. Outstanding. In one category. <laughs> we start off the match with a double fault to Tabil in his service game. You were here last year, you saw him in action, you said during the warm up you notice right away the extra velocity he's got on that first serve. About 30. I did, and so far we haven't seen that serve yet, but we're only two points in. Good start for Wilson, up left 30. Touch there by David Wolfson. He's come out with a lot of confidence here in this first game. Comes the blazing, that's for sure. Look at this driving deep ball and then boom, little touch. That's perfection right there. For a return game, I don't know if you could ask for a more perfect start for David Volson. Going back to that last little touch, though, on the back end, just talk about how difficult that making a shot like that off. He made it look easy, how hard it actually is in real life. That ball's dipping. That ball's got so much spin on it. It's hitting the ground, and, and what he's doing is he's just finessing it. He's absorbing the ball in his strings, but to drop it exactly on a dime the way he did is, uh, that was a pro-like shot, the way he handled that. Very impressive. What a start for Wolfson. That was a perfect, perfect game, really. If you would have told me he was going to break Tabilo at love when he's serving with new balls, I would have been shocked. <laughs> David Wolfson to serve. A double fault to start for Tabilo, and Wolfson responds with the exact same start to his service game. And both second serves from both players missed by a ton. That is total nerves.
Tabilo hits that one just Tabilo. wide. So again, one of those things we spoke about during the girls final that we've done as well is the start of this. These are young guys. I mean, there are some nerves to be had in a big, such a huge championship. You'd think Tabilo would be a little bit past that. He did play in this exact match last year and won. So I'm surprised that he's gotten off to a poor start. And there's another. 15:30. Double fault, so two already in this first game. For David that Folsom. That second serve. Missed by a lot again. It almost hit the baseline. So if you look at the distance between the service line and the baseline, that's a 30-foot that's a miss. That's for sure. Right now, Volson can't seem to get anything going on his serve. Oh. And he's bailed out there as that shot Ready again, off. missing by a wide Front margin so far, both of these competitors. Forehand to Bilo firing it wide. He looks, he's trying to keep everything to the forehand there. I thought on that last shot, maybe he'd switch it up, but Tabilo's running around his backhand, so it looks like every ball is going to his forehand. But <clears throat> Alejandro's wanting to hit forehands. He's got a big forehand. There's a good news there. If you're double faulting three times and it's deuce. You're still in it. You're absolutely still in it. Most of the time you serve three double faults in one game and you're not winning that game. So he can certainly take a positive out of this game if he's able to win it. He can say, well, okay, I could double fault one or two times per game. It's not going to hurt me. Yeah. Advantage here in the second game. That was textbook. Back to Deuce with a big miss there. On the backhand. That shot is perplexing to me. It just didn't look like he moved his feet, and I'm not sure if that's nerves or indecision. Even though Wolfson has an advantage here, he looks totally different than he did in the first game. The first game, he looked so good and so sure of what he was doing. That's a big serve. That's a huge serve, and it gets him out of that, like you mentioned, three double faults in your service game, and you come out and take it. So now you're up two games to none here in the first set. So that's pretty huge for David Wolfson off to quite the start. We talked about how Tabilo has really owned this head-to-head, -head, but the last time they met up, two years ago, there's a lot of room for growth, mentally and physically, in that time. That's more of what I saw last year when I watched Tabilo win this under-18 indoor championship. Big serve and a punishing ground stroke.
15 all. Ten spot two. So we're only in the third game of the match, and we've seen five combined double faults. And I mean, the first serves aren't really even close right now. And no chance for Wolfs in there. As Tabilo approaches ten. the net, puts a little extra power on that forehand shot and makes it very difficult for Volson to have a clean return. Had a look there between us. And there's that rocket of a serve when he can get it down and get him in. It's almost impossible for Volson to return. Especially with the newer balls. Yeah. When they're new, they travel through the air much faster. That was the serve we were watching in the warm up. Oh, he was letting him fly during the warm-up. Here's a look at the replay. That ball takes a huge bounce. Great speed on the serve. Perfectly placed. I imagine as the match goes along, we'll probably start to see the service game get a little bit more intact. Like you said, it's a, it's a big stage you're at for Tabil. You mentioned it, last year's champion. He defeated Harrison Scott in two straight sets, 6-2, 6-2. Actually, Volson had a pretty difficult go. That was his toughest challenge in the semifinals against Harrison Scott to get here Hi. and play Tabilo. Yeah, two tie breaks. Never easy winning a match in two tie breaks. Tells you how difficult. I heard it was over a two hour and 15 minute match. So that's, uh, that was yesterday. Might be, might feel the effects of that. And they're right back at it. And that's back to that old adage of, is it fatigue or is it game ready? So we'll have to see what Volson brings out. at that stage, per se? Especially when that ball's going back down the middle. You know that Tabilo's gonna get a racket on it, so you don't need to hit it quite so hard. And another one ends up out right now, so 15-30 right now, Tabilo wants to even things up here after he was broken in the first game to start this match. At love. At love, which was mind-blowing for the both of us. There's a good clean first serve, just paints the corner there. Evens things up at 30 all. Either of these guys are able to put a first serve in, they're gonna be very successful. During the rally, it was close to being out either way. Volson won't argue it. He gets the point there, and he's up now 40 30. There it is. He holds serve, so he's up 3 1 now in the first set. And for David Volson, 
men. Wolfson, excuse me. He knows about the head to head against Tabilo. How important was it for him to get off to a start like this? To get his confidence going. Vital. There's that big first serve. You mentioned. But I really don't think the head to head is, is as big a factor as we think it is. Yeah, it's something huge for Tabilo that no one knows how many times they've played. And we know that uh, Wolfson has only beaten them once. But it was so long ago. The last match was two years ago. And these guys have had so much time to grow. And their games are totally different. So I, I don't play much. Especially at the it. age that they're at right now. We're two years, you can add five, six inches and 50, 60 pounds of muscle in between that. It can really change the dynamic of this matchup. According to Sebastian Tabilo, Alejandro's brother, uh, Alejandro is at six feet, three and a half inches right now. And we want to thank Sebastian for giving us a boatload of information. <laughs> yep. Some of the ball boys having to dodge those missed serves too. <laughs> Close one again. But 15 30 now. Not much of an argument there nope. from Alejandro. So he's in a hole here. 1 3, 15 30. If he doesn't win this game, he almost can write off the first set. And I think he knows that. Yeah. Up, so that was a crucial point during that rally that had to go to Bilo's way, like you said, or else he's facing being broken once again. See how far over he moved to hit that forehand. He loves that inside out forehand. That's one of his favorite shots. See, look, he's in the doubles alley to hit that shot. Yeah. Most people would have hit backhand there. Seems to really favor going with the forehand. Yep. Way too much there. So we'll even things up at 40. A piece. Great opportunity for Volson there to take a commanding two break yeah. four one lead. If Alejandro is able to win that set and mark that shot down, that was vital. He gets it right back though after getting a little break. He sends one wide. And Again, he looks rather more, more comfortable with the forehand, and he's misfired the times he's gone to the backhand so far in this game. Very tough to change direction and hit that down the line. Yeah. Advantage for Wolfson. Oh, excuse me, that was it, rather. So he has a commanding four to one lead. And I don't think many people would expect to, if you're just tuning in, look at the box score and see in favor of Wolfson four one, but he's come out with confidence. You've been around tennis for a while. When you see a guy really favoring the forehand, what is your almost method of attack against your opposition? To attack the forehand. Yeah? Yep. It's the best way to get it to the backhand. Send it to the weapon. Okay. What do you like out of what you've seen from Volson so far? I love the way he's attacking. Yeah. <coughs> I really think he sent a message with that first game, especially that beautiful little touch he had coming up to the net, almost sent a message to the, op the opponent saying, hey, whatever you're going to bring, I'm ready for it here. And I think I'm almost did it catch Tabilo a little off guard. 
Yeah, I think that Volson isn't worried about Tabilo at all. Yeah. I, you can tell by his body language that he feels like this is a match he can certainly win. Yep. And the fact that Tabilo struggled a little bit um, in his uh, semifinal match, I'm um, oh, sorry, in his quarterfinal match, tells me that uh, Volson saw some of that and picked up on some things that he can certainly capitalize on. There's no doubt Tabilo's going to pick up his level of play. This is uh, not to say that Wolfson won't win this match, but we know Alejandro is going to get better as the match goes on. Uh, an unfortunate bounce there for Wolfson. And one of the first times we've actually seen him attack the net, other than since that first game where he had the nice touch, but he gets a little break and it pays off for him. Yep, not much Alejandro Tabilo can do about that one. For me, the turning point of this first set was the game that he served the three double faults and still held. That's psychologically damaging to, to Alejandro when he can't break serve when the other guy's double faulted that yeah. many times. So if that game would have gone in Alejandro's favor, I think we'd be watching a much different first set. Probably be going a little more back and forth. They're trading games almost. There's another double fault for Wolfson. So he's got four, but he's up 4-1. That's a rarity, like you said, especially, I don't think I can recall the last time I watched a tennis match to see someone double fall three times in a game and still come away with the game intact. And Volson right now, he's certainly playing at like a player who hasn't lost a set in this tournament, which is exactly what he's done. But he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. And he wants to add under 18 championship to his trophy collection. He's won at every other level nationally. Surprised not to see Alejandro come to the net there. He had several opportunities to come forward and finish. But it turned out to be a good play. I just think down the line here, he's going to have to start to think about coming in a little bit. He had Volson his mercy a couple of times. Though. Call there, Alejandro. Not too happy with it. He thought it painted the line, but it stands. The call stands. As it's out. Hetty Chan is the chair umpire, and Hetty confirmed the call from the linesman. He had to come in. Yeah. I mean, that's not coming in. He's forced to come in. That's a good point, yeah. Due to, due to the shortness of that ball, he has no choice but to come forward. So <clears throat> when you're keeping track of net points, that's not a net point because there was no volley made and there was yeah. no attempt to come in. He just, he was drawn in. That is coming forward, yeah. and that is coming to the net. And uh, <clears throat> the best part of that point was the first low volley that he hit that allowed him to come forward, attack the net, and then make that finishing volley very easy. Go. 
open. An advantage now for David Wolfson, looking to go up 5-1 in this first set. That was a rushed forehand from Alejandro. He didn't need to go for so much so quickly. And again, Tabilo not happy with the call. He didn't really get a good vantage point from where we are at. But Volson gets the game, and now he's up five to one in this first set. What do you do at this stage if you're Tabilo? Do you just work on a couple things now if you have to think, if you think in this set might be over and done with? Yeah, you try to hold serve here. Um, to make it 5-2, and then if Wilson is able to hold serve, at least Alejandro gets to start the second set. Yeah. trying to get himself fired up with a come on. Haven't seen much emotion from him in the early going. Ah. And he's up 40 love here in the service game. So doing exactly as you predicted. Wolfson isn't playing this game like it's a do or die game either. He's taken some big swings. Realizing he's up two breaks and he's got two chances to, to serve for it. Tabilo holds, and now five to two for in favor of David Wolfson in this first set. Oddly enough, David Wolfson attends the same high school, Thornhill Secondary School, same high school as another uh, prominent Canadian tennis player. Eh? Is that same tennis player <clears throat> ranked in the top ten in the world? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Milos Raonic, who was a product of this under-18 tournament as well, champion. I remember sitting in this exact chair, watching him uh, win that national championship, I believe, five years ago. Did he still have that same dominant serve that he still possesses? Was he rocking it back then, too? He was, but not nearly to the, to the degree that we see it now. It's, uh, it's a lot bigger now. Oh, yeah. So Alejandro's ITF uh, rankings, at this time last year, he was 323. And now he's 123, Hi. so it's exactly a 200 point or a 200 ranking jump. Obviously, with a ranking of 123, he's the number one Canadian. Um, but that's uh, that's impressive. He got his ITF ranking to as high as 106 on January the 6th this year. That's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. And it's only going up from there with all the titles he's been winning and his consistent play. But he's in tough here in this he first is. set. He's a full-time student, a full scholarship at Nick Boletieri's IMG Tennis Academy, which is, uh, which is a great training facility. And there was a misplay by Wolfson approaching the net that time. Put a little much on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just feathered touch and he gets the point there. Absolutely. I don't know what that was. That that volley was way out. Oh. One of the other uh, accolades you were impressed by when we were talking in off air. He won the, in Tabilo, he won the under 14 Eddie Herr 
International Junior Championship, which you were talking about how big that one is too. Massive. When you're winning the Eddie Herr, when you're winning the Orange Bowl, when you're winning those kind of big junior events, you are showing the world that uh, you're some, somebody to be reckoned with. That's the one thing I was going to say. That's not just a national recognition. That's gaining attention. International. Yeah, exactly. So far in the early going, Alejandro's forehand is really letting him down. That is the sole reason he's down 5-2 two, and two breaks. Um, yes, he came out of the block slowly and got broken at love, and that was nerves, and that was just the, the, the environment. But as this match progresses, if he doesn't start hitting that forehand a little better. Like you said, that forehand is one of the weapons that he possesses, so if that's not working, he won the tournament last year. He won the tournament last year. He yeah. won the tournament last year because of his forehand. Double set point. Wolfson. There's another forehand into the net. So the forehands are hitting the net. They're going wide, and you have to give credit right now to David Wolfson. A pretty good first set, and he takes it in commanding fashion, six to two as we take a look at a replay there of that last set point. It's a telling way for the set to end. Oh, yeah. Alejandro way behind the baseline, taking a massive poke at it and sending it into the middle of the net. We saw that at least five times in, in those eight games that we just witnessed. And as I've said, if he doesn't start to put that shot on the court, this match is not going to last very long. But knowing his coaches and knowing what he's done in the past. He's got a great pedigree. He's got fantastic results behind him. I have no doubt that he's going to turn it around. Um, Coach uh, Jorge Gonzalez from Edmonton, um, who I think is supervised by um, David Amy. But okay. those two guys are doing a good job. You can see he's very technically sound. You can see he's got all the shots. It just looks like he's rushing a little bit. It looks like he's trying to do a little bit too much. There's a sense of urgency there that I don't think needs to be there. I think he has the game to, to beat a guy like David Wolfson, but uh, he's got to stay patient. It'll be interesting to see only one set was lost between these two this whole way, as we mentioned to Denis Shapovalov. Uh, Tabilo beat him 6-4, 6-7, 6-2. Otherwise, clean slate for both these players. And oddly enough, we looked at uh, who their opposition was in the semifinal for Tabilo and in the quarterfinal for Wolfson. They end up beating their doubles partners along the way, which is something that tends to happen at these levels in these tournaments. It doesn't happen so much on the ATP Tour because a lot of the guys yeah. that are playing singles aren't playing doubles. It's exactly. almost different sports. Almost looks as though some of these calls not going his way. It's getting to Tabilo. You can see it on his, his demeanor right now. so far in this match. You can take that rally two ways. You can say, wow, if Alejandro has to fight that hard to win a point, he's in trouble. Or you can look at it and say, OK, now he's starting to play, and he's willing to commit to fighting for every point. There's getting that big first serve. Correction, 30 love, front zero. It makes such a difference. Yes. It makes such a difference when that first serve, that rocket first serve is going in. He will have not much difficulty holding serve if he's putting 60, 70 percent of those serves in on a regular basis. And that's the slider. 
That's the lefty pan opener that is very, very difficult for the right-hander when it's going out wide to their backhand. Even if Wolfson gets that back, the, the court's wide open, oh, yeah. and he just sticks it into the open court. It's pretty nasty movement on that, and an ace there for Tabilo. So if you think about the way he started the first game of the match, he lost his serve at love. Yep. And then things went downhill from there. Now look at that start. Held his serve at love, put three first serves in, look like a completely different player. So if that service game is something for the future, then we probably are going three sets here. Yeah, you, you said it best. I mean, it looks like a completely different player from what we saw at the beginning of set one and the beginning of set two. And I guess that also goes back to the mentality of a guy who's been in this position, a guy who has that championship mentality. You got to just erase it and move on. I think this is a critical game for Wolfson here. I, if he can step up and hold serve, that's going to show me and Mr. Tabilo a lot. I, I think this is the game that will really show um, how this second set's going to go. If he gets broken here, the way Tabilo served. That first go, we could have a quick second set just as we did the first. That was huge. Oh, yeah. If you look at men's tennis right now, ATP, the junior ranks, whatever, it's about the serve and the forehand. And we're seeing that today. The serve and the forehand are dictating most points. You're talking about the pair, uh, the ATP and the parity now in the competition. It's not just your big four, your big three, as much as used to. There's a lot of guys climbing up the ranks. And these guys look to join them in the future as well. I gotta ask, who's your favorite tennis player to watch? Roger it's Roger Federer. Yeah, it is. I'm still a Federer fan, and I, uh, I believe that the fact that he has 17 Grand Slams makes him the best player of all time. I agree. I actually think he's playing better right now uh, than he did in 2006 when he was winning all those championships. Yeah, he's not winning any championships now because the level of play is so much greater. But he looks fantastic right now. He hasn't won an event yet in 2000. Uh, 14. It's getting better with age. I don't know what kind of look I'm going to get from you. I'll, thank God the uh, cameras aren't on us right now, but I'm going to have to tell you that my guy to go to is, uh, I've been an Adal guy since he started up. We know about the rivalry between those two. And he's getting close though in the majors. I think Nadal's going to pass Federer. Yeah. He's, he's going to win at least two more French Opens. That's, that's what that, I was thinking, that's too. That's a given. That'll get him to 15. And then all he has to do is win three more of the others before his career's over. And, and I don't see Federer winning another, another Grand Slam. So yeah. I think Nadal's going to get to 18 or 19. And that's a nice serve and volley there by Volson. So smart to sneak in like that as a surprise attack. Didn't hit that volley hard, just knifed it into the open court. He doesn't come up to the net too often, but he has confidence in his game when he does. Good. And that's a double fault there for Wolfson. It's his fifth one of the match, but you look at the score, and he's going to have no complaints after that first set. Advantage, so an advantage here for Tabilo to break Wolfson. And like you said, this game is huge in this second set. Okay, 
And there it is, a break for Tabilo. Now he's up two games to love in this second set. And it's been almost a reversal of what we saw in the first set, really. Tabilo, he's not happy with it. It looked out from our vantage point. I think they got the right call on that one. It's just one of those things where I think he's been frustrated by a couple of calls he hasn't gotten, so now he's looking for other ones to go his favor. And he hit a pretty good first serve um, that the linesman called in, yet it was overruled by the chair umpire saying out, and then he hits a questionable second serve. So the whole point was frustrating for Tabila. He's getting vocal now, and there's that booming first serve once again. So just like that, he goes through the the method of having to deal with the missed call, double fault, and then in about 30 seconds, two big serves, and he's up 30 50. We're seeing a few more errors from. Mr. Wolfson, and uh, as a result, he's one point away from going down three love. And there it is. So after taking the first set very easily, one would argue almost six to two, six games to two, he now finds himself down three games to none here in the second set. So. Tabilo, you called it. You said it'll take some time, perhaps, but he'll get into his game mode, and that's where the real test will come through for Wolfson. And we're seeing it right now, especially, though. He's got, he's feeling good with that serve. He's hitting those first serves, and it's making life very difficult for David Wolfson in the return game. We just saw the replay there of a forehand that went in the net, which was game point to go up three love. Wolfson's body language isn't great right now, but, uh, again, tennis is... Just like any sport, full of momentum changes. Tabilo's only up one service break, so it's not like the set is over. I felt like when Volson went up 4-1, which was two service breaks, yeah. the, the difference is a three-game spread can be one break or two breaks, depending on who served first. So the three-love lead sounds big, but it's only one service break. And service breaks are huge on this fast indoor court when you've got a massive serve like both these guys have. Tabilo's balls, the depth, the closeness to the baseline yeah. has changed. And it's putting enormous pressure on Wolfson. He went from going one or two feet out to right on the line almost. He's painting it. That's very nice touch yeah. and good disguise. It looked like he was going to really tag that and he just stopped the racket at the ball and dropped it over. Boy, that ball bounced high off the net court. And you it gave Volson enough time to track it down. You don't usually see a ball come off the net and go that high. And 
was another example. Volson put his finger to call it out, but he's not calling it. The linesman called it in. Volson was going to call it out, but it's not his job to call it. We're, we now have umpires and linesmen, so these guys have been playing all week with them and making their own calls. Now today he's not, so he's still in, in call it his own mode. That was a nice forehand. And with that forehand, it evens things up at 30 all here. Still down three games, though, in this second set. seems to bring it out at just the right time when he picks his battles to come to the net. And it's worked in his favor. More he did a good job that. closing the net here. He kept moving through the shot. He got very close to the net and opened up the angle perfectly. out so Volson gets on the scoreboard he takes the game here so three to one now in favor of Tabilo but it really all comes down to when Tabilo is serving if those first serves are going for him it's almost an auto Wolfson took that first serve and just obliterated it back. And that's the way he looked in the first game of the match. And he played a pretty good point there until he mishit that last ball. But that's, uh, that's got to be frustrating for Tabilo because he put it on a really good serve and it came back just as hard. Oh, beautiful touch there by Wolfson. Drop shot for a drop shot. We don't see that too often. And it worked out there for Wolfson. Nice touch. He's got a great game at near the net. That's the best shot I've seen today. Yep. The spin on it. Too. That had enormous backspin on it. So I love the way he hit that one. He moved in. He moved through it. He didn't try to kill it. It was just perfectly placed. Lots of spin in the corner out of Wolfson's reach. Same shot. Exact same thing. They broke, don't fix it. And Tabilo's up now 40-15. We're not seeing those big wild swings anymore. We're seeing a much more controlled, fluid looking shot. It's the first first serve of this game that hasn't dropped for Tabilo. So he hangs on and he takes it. So four games to one now. He's got the lead in this second set. I think for Wolfson, that first serve, you mentioned that rocket that he returned with just as much speed, that must have also frustrated him because he ends up a little bit of a gaff on the, during the rally that sends it out. But I'm sure he builds a little bit of confidence from that last game going, okay, he got three first serves on me and I sent all three right back. That's true. It's frustrating as a server when you're serving that big to see those balls come back because then you realize, okay, I'm not getting three points on my serve anymore and I actually have to work to win these points, and yeah. that's frustrating. But I guess for Tabilo, he ended up winning the game at, at uh, 40 15. So it was, um, it was impressive, to say the least. Tabilo played uh, in the Junior Davis Cup last September. Um, I think it was his fifth time as the number one player for Canada. And uh, he beat the number one U.S. player, Stefan Kozlov. Kozlov, at the time, was ranked number five in the ITF rankings. Wow. That's an impressive win for our Canadian, uh, Mr. Tabilo. Um, so he certainly has... That's huge. He has some big-time wins. 
That's why I think neither of us sitting here after he loses the first set 6-2 were necessarily thinking, oh, this is going to be a walk for Wolfson. This is a, one that Tabilo can come right back in. And you're looking at the box score right now on your screen, and it's an indication of he's responded well in the second set. A little bit of more emotion, whether it's negative or positive, from Tabilo. Wolfson's pretty much got this clean slate right now. tell you the number of times I've watched these guys try to blast the ball down the line when they're trying to change direction. It, their percentages are far less than 50%. But they keep trying to hit the home run. Yep. It's, it's like getting up to the plate with the bases loaded and hit the single, score two runs. You don't need to hit the home run every time. from being in the game for so many years such as yourself, is that just something that comes with age and with mental maturity? It does. It comes from learning the situation, learning when to go for it. There are certainly times when you want to do that. Tabilo is feeling it right now with that forehand. I think the point you made was spot on, though. Controlled. It's not as wild, and we're seeing why he's hitting it so perfectly right now. There's a nice little serving volley response there by Wolfson. 30-15. Love to see that serving volley. It, uh, it's disappeared from the game, and as a surprise tactic, it could be very, very successful. I think he's three for three when he's ventured to the net in that sort of fashion, sir, coming in after the serve. See how he reached on that one? He was so far in front of it. It looked like, looked like he was barely going to get his racket on the ball, and he tried to hit it down the line. Yeah. It's a tough shot. It makes it more difficult even on yourself. This is a big game for Wolfson. He's not out of the set. As I said, it's only one break. But if he loses his serve here, obviously we're, we're, we're talking a third, third set. set. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing myself. Ah! Right now, the way it's gone over the long haul, it almost Ready, favors Tabilo, the way he's brought his game up here in the second set. So this is break point to go up two service breaks, 5-1. That's it. Another error. That's a several occasions during that last service game where Wolfson's finding the net right now. Seems to have lost a little bit of that swagger, if you will, almost, that he started the game with. The feet stopped moving. He got a little tight there. And when the feet stop moving, you cannot hit a ball with that much velocity and hope to put it in the court. So is this almost an opposite of what happened with Tabil? It's kind of a write-off at this stage for Wolfson, and you're just looking forward to this third set now. Yeah, you're right. I can tell by Wolfson's body language that the third set can't start soon enough. Yeah. Wolfson is one point away from losing his first set in this tournament. Well played by both in that instance. And you called it. And second set. Second set Tabilo. goes the way of Alejandro Tabilo. So we'll make it a six one margin. Great little drop shot there, bringing Volson in, and then the whole court is open. 
at that point, he could have hit it anywhere he wanted to. He could have hit it right at Wolfson, too. You see the pros do that sometimes. A little intimidation factor. They take that ball and they just zip it right at your belly button. And uh, anyway, he decided to go in the open court and won the point pretty handily. So interesting look there at our box score. First set goes 6-2, a dominant win for David Wolfson. And Alejandro Tabil comes right back and hands him his first set, his first set that he's lost for Wolfson in this entire tournament. Well, you've been a, a player and you've been a champion yourself. When you were playing at this age range, did you find yourself in this sort of situation before, looking at a third set? All the time. And mentally, what was your approach to try and get through and get the victory? Well, I, I, you can say who has the advantage here. I don't know. Uh, you'd think that Tabilo has the advantage because he just won the second set. But the stats say on the, on the ATP Tour, the guy who wins the first set, uh, in best of three matches, yep. that is, the guy who wins the first set often wins the third. So that means for Tabilo to continue this momentum would mean he'd have to sustain it for a, a lengthy period of time. I feel like Tabilo definitely has the momentum. Yeah. He just won the second set, 6-1. But we see all the time scores like that, 6-2, 2-6-6-2. We wonder, well, how did the person who just lost the second set, what happened? But it... Uh, these kind of things are um, difficult to sustain over such a long period of time. If you're in a position that David Wolfson was in where you're playing such a high-ranked player, you get through the first set so easily, and now you get dominated in the second set, what kind of is going through your mind at that stage? Just got to regroup, yeah. got to find what I was doing in the first set. Now, the, the difficulty is... Tabilo isn't the same player anymore. When, yeah. when Wolfson won that first set, he was beating a guy who was a little bit off, um, and there wasn't a lot of confidence and there wasn't a lot of swagger with Tabilo. That's all changed. Tabilo's first serve percentage in that second set went way up. He was almost unbreakable in that second set, and he was unbreakable. He didn't, he didn't lose hardly any points on his serve. So <clears throat> I feel like if I'm Wolfson, i got to somehow...